with a screen that big, I'm not, are you am I on? <laughs> well, uh, happy Sunday, everybody. Happy, happy uh, third Sunday in December. Uh, here we are again for the last live chat of the year. And we thought this, for this live chat and it being the holiday season and everybody being in a, in a hustle, we thought we would do the live chat a little differently. So, uh, first of all, we need to let you let me know if you can hear me. If my mouth is just moving, I guess maybe you can. Uh, so, Roger, do we have the chats coming in? Uh, yes, uh, Judy Macy says, welcome, Studio Satters. It's, uh, or it's, uh, I guess she's a, there we go. She's a new one. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Very good. That's good. Yes. I always am a little bit hesitant to say too much before I can be assured that you hear me. Um, and I don't know what that paranoia is all about. All right. So today we're going to address something that usually scares painters, uh, or I should say emerging painters, uh, causes emerging painters great stress, and that is... The topic, the topic of what is this issue about drawing? Why is it that people struggle with drawing? And uh, is it important for a painter to know how also to draw? And well, well, what do we do when we're drawing? What is this whole thing of drawing all about? So we're going to uh, go into an exercise where I'm going to be drawing for you. But uh, before we go into that exercise, uh, I just uh, want to be sure that uh, everybody is with me. And if you would like to, if you have uh, nearby, if you have uh, pencil and paper, I didn't make an announcement ahead of time about that, but if you have pencil and paper uh, or something to that effect, um, perhaps you might feel like drawing along with me somehow, uh, at least to do some little exercises I may show you how to do. Um, Roger, is it possible for me to see um, uh, the participants, etc.? See what? To see oh. uh, participants. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. That's good. Uh, okay. So eyes, I'm seeing them coming in now. <laughs> Comments coming in. People coming in, and that's good. Um, so. I guess maybe the best thing to do is just get started. Uh, before we get started, uh, I would like to get some response from uh, the the members. Or maybe I should talk about uh, how we're going to do the response thing today just a little bit. Usually, uh, when, when we're having these chats, uh, if, if all the subscribers, if everybody responds, the chat line, chat goes so fast we can't see the comments coming in, but if uh, we had to find a way to restrict that, to limit it, and so we uh, decided that we would have chat available for members, let the member, the Studio Insider members ask the questions, and that way we could keep up with uh, what's going on in the chat. All right, so we're hearing from some folks now. I was beginning to feel a little bit uneasy about whether Folks who are joining us, here we I see, oh, so we see uh, Maurice and Carolyn, Eve, Terry, Carla, Carmen, Cheryl are all saying hello to us and uh, welcome to all of you and everybody else who's joining us too. So uh, here's what we're going to do this. I'm going to get started now in just a few moments. Uh, we have an overhead camera. There comes Mary Ellen. Uh, we have an, oh, and Fiona, great. Uh, overhead camera today, which you haven't seen before in these live chats. Uh, so in a few moments, Roger's going to switch out to the overhead camera, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be showing you my drawing pad, and uh, and I will be drawing so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So uh, that's how we're going to do this. And I, as you, as I'm drawing and talking, uh, feel free to ask questions. If you like, if I, if I uh, am doing something you don't quite understand, uh, please ask questions about it, and then we will, I, I, Roger will read the question to me, and we will, I'll certainly answer that, or I'll, I'll certainly answer that. So, um, 
For the exercise today, I decided let's do something simple. Let's take a shape that might be challenging. You might look at when uh, as a challenging shape, but let me show you if you know how to look at the world as an artist, then you will be able to draw not only the shape that I'm working with today, <clears throat> pardon me, but any anything you look at. The problem, as I see it from a few years of teaching, the problem that most people have that causes them to struggle with drawing is that they really don't know how to see visually. Now, there's a difference between seeing and finding your way around the world and seeing visually. When you're seeing visually, as an artist, you're looking for visual things, things that cause images to appear the way they do. And, and so when we are drawing, we're not looking at something as it, what it is. For example, I'll be drawing, we have, guess what, a cow, <laughs> another cow. Um, I'll be drawing a, a, a cow. We won't be looking at that as a cow. We don't, that's not the way to see it as an artist. That's how a veterinarian would look at it or someone who's um, uh, maybe buying cows for their herd or whatever. But as artists, we're not looking at it as cow, but we're looking at it for what we see happening within it visually. So I want to start there and uh, talk about, uh, uh, Roger, if you can go ahead now, if you will, and switch us to the overhead camera and the photo of the cow, and let me talk just a few moments uh, or show them what I'm talking about here, and then they can start asking questions as we move along. There we go. All right, there's me, and there's the cow. Now, <laughs> and here's my drawing pad, and here's my hand. I know that seems kind of ghoulish right now. When, when I say looking visually, uh, when you look at that cow, you see in it, you see visual movement. Now, what is visual movement? Visual movement, let me get over here. Okay. Visual movement is edges inside and out of images that go from one point to another. So if I'm looking at the top of the cow's head, uh, Roger, could you put your cursor there at the top of the cow's head? Uh, can, show up. can they see the cursor? No. Okay. Uh, what I can do is we we don't have a method for me to I can actually. Do the other uh -huh. I can then, do the other camera. That's okay. We don't have a method for me to actually point to where I'm drawing. So if you would just follow me. If you look at the cow at the top of the cow's head, you'll see that there is generally from the where the horn begins on what we see as on our left side of the top of the cow's head. To the horns on the other side, there is a visual movement, and it's horizontal. Do you see that? It's moving straight across. It's horizontal. Now, we have two major kinds of visual movement kinds. We have the straight, straight movement. Let me let me just get up here so I can draw better. Uh, we have a straight movement. Straight movement can move in any direction and we have the curvilinear movement a curve can move in any direction and we have the combination of the straight and the curve now those are two major kinds of visual movement that you look for when you're drawing those the visual movement then itself can move in a certain number of directions, meaning a visual movement can move horizontally. It can move horizontally if it's going straight. It can move horizontally in a loop if it's going in a curve. It can move vertically if it's going straight. And it can move vertically if it's looping in a curve. So I'm looping up in a curve and I'm going straight up in a curve. I'm going in that direction, which is a vertical, 
or I'm going in this direction, which is horizontal. Now, that's exactly what's happening in that cow. Uh, the visual movement can go that we have the, 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 the vertical, the horizontal, and the diagonal. Now the diagonal can be any tilt in a line, in a direction, in a movement. It's a movement. It can be any tilt that is not horizontal or vertical. See, this is horizontal, and then it gets diagonal, and then it gets diagonal, and then it gets diagonal, and it, it's all these tilts between the vertical and the horizontal are diagonals, and they happen between every vertical and horizontal. So it may happen over here, or it could happen down here. And so <clears throat> I'm going to be have a, a this is going to be a froggy day, so get just get used to it. So see that that's all visual movement. That's very important because that's what we're looking for when we're drawing. We're looking for visual movement, and then we're looking for just with those just with that sort of thing. The next thing is then how far does it go? Is it going very short distance or is it get going visually a longer distance? So uh, we can explore that visual movement with just a gestural motion, which I'm going to be doing first. So I'm going to start out with a gesture drawing, a gestural motion, and then we'll go from there. And I don't know whether there'll be enough time for me to do what we would call a finished drawing of this. But now I'm going to begin by doing a visual movement, a, an exercise of visual movement of this image of the cow, as you see right here. And so I'll just move myself over here. A little bit of a, get my stuff arranged here as I'm doing it. Let me see if, if I have any questions thus far about the concept of visual movement. Does, does anybody have any question about that? So when you're looking at that cow, you're not looking at, at it as cow, but you're looking at it, I'm frozen. Uh, someone says you're frozen. Roger, do you see what? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not frozen here. Okay. It, uh, Terry, I think it's your screen, dear. Uh, I, I think everything seems to be uh, moving along here. Maybe buffering, yeah. Maybe buffering, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So here's what here's what we're gonna do now. If I'm when I'm drawing that cow, I would like for you to follow. If you're looking, Roger, would you point your cursor just sort of circle? You can't see it. Oh, they can't see. All right. So don't bother about it. Yeah. I would like to you for you to glance back and forth at the cow's head now as I'm drawing. Now it's important as I'm drawing, it's important that I I hold my pencil in a way that's going to allow me to explore that visual movement I just talked about. So if, if I'm holding my pencil right down here and I'm going real tight like this, I'm not going to be explore, able to explore that visual movement. Now there's another, I think, Probably, I would but call it, I could call it a mistake uh, that a lot of people, a lot of people when they first start drawing will fall into. When, you, when a lot of people first start drawing, they'll, they'll move in real close and they'll, they'll just do stuff like that. You see? Like that. And you see how tight that is. The pencil's being held too tight and it's being held too close to the end of the paper. So it's better if you hold your pencil further out. I like to hold my, my pencil will slide up and down usually while I'm drawing, but I like to hold my pencil further out and, and like to move, have the movement to come from my arm, elbow, and shoulder. Mainly the movement is an arm movement, a, a movement for drawing is an arm movement, kind of like this, you see. It's not a finger movement like that. So that is also, that's one place a lot of times where people get caught, they feel insecure about drawing, so they pull way in on their pencil or drawing tool, and then they just start squeezing it, and then they just start, you see, you can't really, when you're holding a pencil like that, you can't really explore or uh, record the visual movement you're seeing. And then the other thing is that a lot of people will draw like this, they draw, 
uh, sort of like this. You see what I'm saying? See what I'm doing like that? Kind of, kind of trying to put it together like that. Well, see, that's not capturing the visual movement. That's just sort of tracing edges in kind of a hatchy way. Uh, but that's not what we're doing either. I think before I go any further, I want to say one thing. I am aware that there are a lot of painters who actually trace photos and then do a painting from it. Now, this, uh, what I'm saying for you, what I would like to say here about that, if that gives you security, that's all it gives you. But if you're just tracing an image, then you're not really learning anything about it. You're not really feeding the artist in such a way that you can find an interpretation that, in, in that image that's really going to express it. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into a lecture against Trace. Now I'm just going to say there is joy in exploring visual movement. And that's what I'd like for you to, to experience with me. All right, now, without any further ado, let's just go. Now here's what I'd like to do. I want to give, uh, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the cow's head. Now, can you see as my pencil, I'm just going to hover. This is called phantom. Phantom is where you hover your pencil over the paper while you are looking at the image. So as I'm looking at the top of the cow's head like that, you see, I am phantom. I'm doing that phantom. And you can see that that is moving. See, I haven't made a mark yet. I haven't made a mark at all, but you might have imagined a mark there because I'm moving in that direction. So if I'm moving over the cow's head like that, and see, and it's, it's an arm movement, arm and wrist movement. See, if I'm moving over the top of the cow's head like that, and I move forward over that movement of the cow's head, I can move backward again and then forward again because every movement has two directions. It goes backward, forward, and backwards. And then you can see if I move around, I can move around just like that. And you see now I'm at that point where the horn intersects that head. Now at that point, I see where does that movement go. And you see, I see it going in this direction. I see it going in this direction. And I see it going in this direction. So that, that then records that visual movement. And all the visual movement I've made thus far is, is the visual movement that is caused by my viewpoint of that cow's head. So now I, can, now I can pick up where I left off. At this point, what's happening there is that the, the horn uh, is kind of looping over. And it's maybe a little bit difficult for you to see, but it kind of loop, uh, loops down, loops down in that direction. That's a, a curve, a curving movement. And, and then it turns abruptly, it turns and it goes back in this direction. And that's how you make something turn. Uh, you just follow the movement. Which way is it going and how far is it going? And we see very little there of that tip of that horn because of the way it's turned. It's mostly just a diagonal movement that we see right here and that di diagonal movement connecting right there. Now I have drawn uh, the visual movement that places where that horn is. And then we'll see that the ear of that cow begins right here. And that, that ear, and you see it's my hand that's moving. I want you to notice that it's my hand that's moving. And you can see, I don't know if you can see the arm that's moving the hand. Oh, I'm getting behind that. Let me pull that over just a little bit. There we go. So I don't get behind that image for you. Um, let's see, where am I? Okay, right here. And that's the other thing too. When you're taking this viewpoint, when you're taking this attitude of drawing, where you are exploring the visual movement that is within the image you're seeing, uh, you, the phone might ring and you think it's important enough to answer. You can put your pencil down and come back to it and you can pick up right where you left off because you know where you are. And, and all you do is go back and you look again at what, where, what is it doing? What is this doing 
it's moving in this direction, the edge of that ear is moving in this direction, and then it turns, you see there? It stops there, and it turns, and it moves in this direction. You see, I can phantom that movement. I can really phantom that movement until I am sure I'm moving in the same direction it's moving in. So it's moving in that direction, and then it turns again about right here, and what does it do? It moves in this direction right here. It, at, at any point, uh, visual movement or drawing in this approach is not just about drawing the outside edges, it's about drawing what's on the inside too. And so at any point, we, we can move from one place to another and connect things together according to where we see them connected and we're still recording the image. Now, uh, uh, there are a lot of people who will think that you've got to draw the whole how, the whole cow's face first and you fill it in. Or uh, a lot of people would think that if you're drawing a human face or if you're drawing uh, an animal's face, that you want to draw all the outside edges and fill it in. Well, that's not seeing visually. That's seeing by formula. That's guessing what's there and then trying to fit in and, uh, and uh, shape according to what you guessed might be there. Or it's generalizing when you're trying to generalize what you may know about a shape and then try to shape what you see into that generalization. Now, what I'm doing here with this approach is that I am exploring. I'm exploring directly without assuming anything. So I'm not assuming that something is going to be here or here or here. I'm simply exploring it as it goes. And so you see, if you can take that approach, can you see how easy that is? That all the work we're doing, all the work we're doing is we're following movement. We're seeing these edges of these shapes as movement. We're seeing which direction they're moving in. I say moving, moving again. We're seeing how long or short they are. And we're simply recording them by the way we move our hand in a, uh, allowing the arm to move the hand and allow the, uh, the hand to hold the pencil in such a way that it can move in a lively way. Now I can move back up here. Now, I, I'm going slow, much, much slower here than I would go if I were, if I were just exploring this uh, on my own without your looking on. I'm going much slower so that you can see, so that you can see more easily exactly what's going on here, exactly what's happening. You see, there is a movement there, that visual movement that starts right here, uh, where this side of the head uh, touches the ear, and there's a shadow area back in here, but there is a movement that moves up like that and moves back up here. And you see, now I'm beginning to move in this direction that connects that stuff together. So we can explore areas and watch how those areas, where, where those images are, and the way we place those images then will cause the whole thing to fall together. So, all right, going back here, let's take a sip of coffee, because you have to have a cup of coffee or tea or something like that um, to enhance your drawing skills. Uh, for, is there any question that anybody has now up until this point? Uh, I don't see any chat coming in at all, so I suppose there are is there any question? Mary Marie came in. Oh, yeah, there we go, ready. Cheryl. Okay, Cheryl. Good. Uh, Cheryl's saying, I'm getting confused between how to record forward, backward, and forward without it becoming a hatching type mark, especially on small images, edges of nose. Okay, Cheryl, don't get confused. It's not necessary to always go forward, back, and forward again. And when you're going lightly, let me just get up, get get up here. Okay, so let's just take a, let's just take a, say in uh, the shape. Let's just take a, just an edge like that. Okay, now you see if you if you're going forward the edge, I said 
we can go back and forward again, or we can take the edge and keep going. Now, it is an option, but not a requirement for getting the exploration of the image. So, uh, it is a matter of movement. You see, the hatching thing that we're talking about, this is the hatching thing. If I were, if I were rendering a shape like that with a hatch, it would be going something like that. And can you see the difference in that? It'd be going something like that. But if I am moving with it like this, my hand, my arm is feeling the movement. Now this magical thing happens when you're moving your hand with a shape like that. A magical thing happens is you, you build a memory of it. If I'm doing a study of this cow, if I want to use this cow, uh, say I might be doing a study, I might be doing a drawing of the cow to present just as a drawing, but I might be doing a study of the cow uh, because I want to do a painting of it. And, I, and the study I'm doing here is to help me to get familiar with it. Well, this magical thing happens, and you can, just, you can explore it for yourself and see what I'm talking about. Uh, the, the magical thing happens is when you explore it, like that, like I'm doing, like I'm exploring here with the movement, not just the hatch hatch. Remember, you are explore, exploring movement. Exploring mean that you're moving your arm the way you see that movement go. Your, your body is moving in the way you see that moving, movement going. And your body records that. Your body remembers it. You will be surprised if you go through a drawing like that, you could go away from the image and probably draw it from memory. It, it really will record in your muscle memory uh, because you'll, you'll experience it. Doing this sort of thing where you are allowing your hand to move with the movement itself enables you to experience it. it, it could have have an experience of it. It's like listening to music. When you actually hear the music in your body or you're dancing, when you're dancing with the music, you're hearing it in a different way than you are if you're just hearing it in the background while you're shopping. So the, your, the actual experience of it is going to enable you to, to uh, remember it, but it's also going to enable you to uh, communicate it when if you're actually in the process of uh, doing a painting of this later on or whatever, you have explored it in such a way that it helps you to get to know it. And when you're, but you, but on the other hand, if you're just doing a hatch type search like that, you don't have the experience. You're 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 shaping through and hatch it through a hatchy type thing like this. You're shaping an edge, but you're not experiencing the movement of the edge. Cheryl, is that, does that explanation at all clear up your confusion? Um, let me know. And I say where I was, where was I in here? So I didn't, I did want to move just a little bit faster. So, uh, all right. So what have we got in here? All right. So now I'm just going to keep moving. So as I'm moving around, I'll move down now. Yes. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, um, I'll move down now the, to the side. Wait just a minute. I kind of got got a skew now. There we go. I'm here, and then I'll move down now to the side of the cow's face, and I see it moving like that. And now it's difficult uh, because that side of the cow is in shadow. That's a little tricky to see. Uh, it it being in shadow like that, it's it's causing me to. Uh, uh, have to really search to find that movement. That, that's one of the, you might call it one of the disadvantages of uh, working from a photo. Because if I were there uh, searching the movement of that cow, then then I would be able to, um, I would be able to see it a little bit better. But, but because the, the side of that cow is in shadow now, I need to really look I need to really look to see where that face is going. So I'm going to go a little bit faster now. All right. What happened, Roger? It, 
<laughs> uh, working with layers. We're good. Huh? Working with layers. We're good. Oh, okay. Just don't uh, don't worry about those layers. And skip, oh. and skip an ad. Okay. Okay. All right. So now I'm moving down this way, and okay, catching it like that, and now I'm catching the side of the cow's mouth. Now. If this bothers you right here, if this bothers you where I was searching out the movement, this is a good place for me to stop and, and point out to you what we mean when we say searching. So I'm just going to briefly, I'm going to interrupt the cow with the Michelangelo. Now this, in this Michelangelo drawing, this is... Uh, a drawing of the word. this is typical of the way Michelangelo drew, drew, typical of the way he searched a drawing out where he was not trying to get an exact line, but he was exploring where that movement is. You see what we have here? We have explore, exploration here, here, and here. If we look over on the, the other side right here, we have that we have these explorations you see here, here, here. Look at this. We see here, here, there. He may have started that shoulder there and said, no, that's not where it is. Started the right down, no, that's not where he is. And then he picks it up here and then continues to explore it. So you can see these lines where Michelangelo in exploring this subject for this drawing has searched and we can see other areas this is one of my favorite areas right down here you see of the child's leg the the calf here of the child's leg we see here's one place where he put it and you can even see here here and then he looked at it again and saw here and somebody might have said well the child's leg might have just moved well okay whatever but uh i don't th i think this is michelangelo searching you can see it right here too you see He's searching here, here, and here. And thankfully, here, you see it again. Michelangelo's searching lines. Thankfully, he left us that record instead of trying to remove it. And so when we're searching like that, if we start looking at, to, at it as whether it's right or wrong, we're getting distracted and we're judging ourselves and we're not going to be able then uh, to explore it with the right attitude. So you, it, it, it must be moving forward. The whole idea of drawing, with uh, drawing by exploring the movement, drawing by exploring the visual movement. It has to be an, a, a confident, non-critical exercise. It is not a matter of whether you got it right. That doesn't count. It's, did it go where you see it going? That's the way you, you, uh, you that's the way if you want to re-examine where you've been, that's the way you do it. If you felt you got it wrong, you got it wrong, then you're headed in the wrong direction because that's going to make you tense. And then you're going to start uh, just guessing at where it goes. So it's always a good idea to keep that attitude of exploring as you move along. Now I'm going to go back up here. I keep saying I wanted to move a little bit faster with this because I'm seeing time fly here and I'm not even, I uh, haven't even begun good. But I, I want to really uh, point out to you that when you're taking this attitude towards drawing, you will be able to draw anything you, you're looking at from whatever point of view you're looking at because you'll be exploring what your eyes seeing. And, and if you, when you're exploring what your eyes seeing, you can't miss. All right, so here we go. And now I'm phantoming. I'm phantoming, meaning I'm exploring that top movement, that top edge. And I'm, I have a tendency to, when I'm exploring, I have a tendency to explore in both directions. I explore the direction. I, I will explore this direction. I will come back and explore in this direction again. Sometimes, I may not always do that, but that is my tendency, and, and as I said to Cheryl earlier, it's not necessary for, uh, it's not necessary to do that. But what what it is what is important is that we are searching. Now I'm searching, I'm searching here. That line, I see that movement going in. And when I say line, I mean movement. Uh, a line, you cannot have a line that's not moving. 
And uh, so if, if so, we will say that's part of the artist's language, the word line is. And so if I see a line right there, you see, I'm just, right now, that's one of those small movements that Cheryl was talking about. It's a very short movement, but it's a very short hand movement. And yeah, uh, it may, you know, it may be a little akin to hatching, but this, the, it's not hatching, it's not hatching per se. It's simply exp exploring a short movement that's moving in that direction. And then it takes the direction right here and it turns. Now we got something else going on here. Now what I want to look for, uh, we see all this going up in here, all this going on in here. And what I want to look for here now, as I put that together, is I want to look for how these are uh, aligned, how they're related to each other. I'm looking, I'm looking at the cow and then I'm seeing that this movement comes down about like that. About like, oh, it actually does this, doesn't it? All right, that's a searching. It comes down like that, and then it changes direction again. Now, right in here, well, let's go back. We've got so much stuff going on in here that we can, we can play. We can play in that area. We can explore, explore all these little hidey places. Explore them. Where is it going? Where is it going? Okay, I see it moving in that direction. I can do a little phantom, move in that direction. And then it changes and moves in this direction up here. And then it changes again and does a little bit of that. And then it turns and does something like that. And let's say we have some stuff going on inside, little movements going on inside like that. And then as it comes down, I see what did I do? Okay, there we go right there. Comes down and then I see that the uh, that edge of that eye picks up right here, uh, and there's an. Uh, no, it doesn't. It pick up. It picks up about right here, doesn't it? Maybe that one needs to come back here. Go, kind of do the Michelangelo style searching there. Did I go before enough over there? Probably didn't. Probably need to go over a little bit further like that. See, so that is what you call exploring. You're searching. You're searching. You're trying to discover what's there. So you're exploring what your eye is seeing. And then we get over here and we see that is really an angle that a short, it's moving in a, a, an angle. It's a di little diagonal thing that drops down here. And then under here, it sort of turns a little bit. And, and then we have another angle that drops down about right here, don't we? And then that little angle sort of just keeps going just a little bit right there. And now this, uh, uh, you could, if you want to, you could go ahead. Uh, did I bring that over far enough? Let's bring it over a little bit further. Okay, and so we do have this movement continuing over here, and it moves to about right here till we have this movement, this movement coming down about like that, tilting that way. And then if we go on across right here, we might. this might be a good time to go ahead and catch that other eye. And where does it connect? You can see it comes down. We have it, it moving downward like this. And then we can see it moves upward like that. And on the other side of it, we see it moves up like that. And then it moves down like that. And then we're beginning to see it come together. All right, now let's see. I could continue to follow. I see a little... A, a, an edge a movement moving in this direction right there very light so my tendency is uh, I will make a, a lighter line where that movement is light but that's just a tendency uh, and let's see now let's go back over on this side and pick this up now you can see as this starts right here it moves down like that moves down like that and what does it, it turns it moves down it's a sort of an angle there and then it turns and it goes in this direction right here, sort of like that. And then what happens? Then it turns again. It kind of goes right in, turns and kind of goes right in here. That's a searching movement. Turns and goes right in there. And then, now let's see, is that how far down does that movement come right, right in there? Is it about right here? Maybe it's about right there. And it goes uh, across like that, sort of like that. Now let's see how that relates to what we see up here. And let's see that coming down like that. And and then we, 
Now, this too, you see this begins to show us that whole vertical, frontal uh, feel of looking into that cow's face. You can see the, without saying cow's nose, without saying cow's eye, without saying cow's ear, or any of that stuff, we can see that we can just look at where those, how those edges are moving, where they're going. Now, if I see right straight, right over here, comes about right in here, we can see this is moving down like that. And let's see, and then there's an inside movement that's moving in kind of like that. And then there is another that turns under like this. And then there is another that turns and goes about like this. And then turns and goes about like this. And then let's move over here. This one, oh, there's a fun one. Look at that. That turns and moves kind of like that. And then it turns again, turns back in the other direction and moves kind of like that. And we see that beginning to happen there. All right, let's see how is all that falling into place. I, oh, I didn't catch that. There we go. So we got that movement on top. It goes across like that. And then we begin to see how this connects and moves in this direction right down here. Now I'm going to go back up in here. I'm going to capture, I'll come right here. And where is this going? It's going down like this, going like this, going like this. And then it turns very slightly and goes down like this. And then it turns very slightly and goes down like this. And then, now did I have that? There we go. It's going down about like that and keeps going. And it sort of joins in with another movement right here that turns and goes up about like that. And okay, that felt all right. Then, 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 then we can go over here. Now this is, this is, uh, one fun way of uh, when you get the major part or the front part of a head of something that's looking at you, when you get that part in, then we can begin to see how the back part, now we can't see in the picture, we can't see all of that back part, but we can see enough here. The tendency, if we're looking at an animal straight up, and we can also see it if you slightly turn towards us like that, where we can see its side or its back or whatever. Uh, a lot of people just go draw this real long right here. Well, we're not seeing it long. Look how short. We know that this is the back of the cow about right in here. Look how short, look how short that movement is. In fact, it's right up here. And you see it moves up very slightly like that, moves over very slightly like that and tilts down very slightly like that. And that indicates to us something that's going off the picture itself, which is the back end of the cow. Now, this approach uh, to drawing, this approach to discovering, uh, the, uh, discovering the visual movement of anything we look at uh, is something I would encourage you to try, where you are simply just exploring for the sake of exploring in which direction an edge or whatever is going. Now, let me start right here and see if there are any questions, if there are any questions up until this point about what I've shown you how to do. Um, have, is the chat completely stopped? Uh, nobody yet, nobody there. Yeah. Huh? No, nobody, nothing new. Oh, nothing's new to come in? Okay, all right. So I'm assuming that uh, <laughs> I'm assuming that maybe I, you don't have any questions. Is there any other question yeah. about that? Hmm? Penny sent a test. <laughs> send a test? Yeah. <laughs> She's just testing, I guess. Oh, okay. I would like to show you an exercise now. Uh, let's see. We don't have that much time. I'd like to show you an exercise now. Or, I'll show you now how we might take what we have here 
and carry it just a little bit further. If you mm -hmm. erase as you explore, does it make it harder to draw? Yes, it does make it harder to draw. Uh, this, uh, that, and that's what I want to show you now is if now, if I, uh, if I were going to explore this, if I were going through the whole thing, let's just take what I've got right now. Um, I think it's like miles on your pencil. I don't know what that means. I, I tend to tense up watching you, but I see the need to relax. I don't know. Um, do you know why you tense up watching me? <laughs> I, I'd like to, uh, while you're figuring that out, I'd like to show you now what we can do with this as far as turning a, a gestural drawing. That's what this is. It's a gest gestural <laughs> exploration. <laughs> All right, they're beginning to come in now. <laughs> what they're saying, we're all drawing and erasing. Erasing! <laughs> Do you see any eraser on my pad? You don't see an eraser. Shape proportions. Shape proportion like that. Yeah, I know. You're worried about too much stuff. If, if you take this approach of where you are, as you're moving from one edge to the other, you're looking at how far it's going, and where it connects. You won't have to worry about the proportion. The proportion will fall into place. Proportion means relationship of size, how as the size of one area, the length of one area, is how long it is in compared with the length of another. Or it also uh, has, the, that's what proportion is. Uh, and if you will simply compare as you go, compare how long or how short an edge is while you're going, then you won't, you'll see the whole thing falls into proportion. Now, you're worried about erasing. If I wanted to, uh, once I finish a gesture drawing, I usually I go much faster when I'm developing a gesture drawing. I was trying to move slowly into this just to sort of show you how to see it, how to see it. It's all that's concerned within here. Um, if I'm going to take this fur if I were going to take this further, the one then then after I had finished all of the exploration, I would probably want to clean up some areas. First of all, I would go go back and maybe clean up a few areas just to be able to see where it is. And that's the only time I'd erase. I do not consider an eraser helpful if you're using it to correct what you call mistakes. If you are in that mode, or you think you're making mistakes in drawing, uh, I would like to see you shift out of that into an attitude of exploring what's there and searching in the way that I'm trying to show you today how to search. Use your eraser only to give you clarity. If you have if you have stray lines, or if uh, sometimes I will have areas that got smeared, I will just clean it up just a little bit with a little bit of a kneaded eraser like this. I'll just kind of clean it up just a little bit. If I have areas where I might have uh, strayed up where I've got it smeared or that sort of thing, now we can use an eraser very helpful to us as a, sub, uh, a, a subtracting tool. But at this point, if once I have a, a drawing to my satisfactory that I have discovered in the relationship of shapes where everything is as it belongs, I like to turn it into a finished drawing, then this is how I would go about that. Now, uh, I would begin to move into areas and simply find their shadow side. And so if I were doing this, then I would use something like this, this right here as just a, you see what I'm doing here? I'm just using a line that creates a consistent value throughout that's moving in the same direction and I would indicate where all the shadow is, where all the shadow areas are. You see I'm simply allowing my pencil to move. See what I'm doing there? Because that fr that frontal part of that face is all in shadow. And so I will simply use a line, a, uh, having my pencil turn like that and having the shaft of the pencil make lines like this that are repeated, this sort of hatch lines, uh, allow my whole arm, my whole arm to move. 
I have my arm on the image, I mean my eye, <laughs> I have my eye on the image, and I would simply begin to move throughout the image like this and put a single value over all the areas I find in shadow. And I don't separate that at all. I don't separate that into uh, air, uh, parts in shadow. It's simply a shadow as a subject of everywhere I see shadow. And all this falls into shadow. And all that falls into shadow. And this part somewhat falls into shadow. Uh, this part down here and so on. Uh, this part right in here certainly falls into shadow. That whole area there falls into shadow. And that would indicate that all of this is edge light right here. Edge light right there. A little bit of shadow back there and so on. So that would be my next step. Now I would like to bring Michelangelo over and show you that's what he did too. You see right here, he, his hatch lines are a little farther apart than mine. But what he's doing, you see right in here, right in here, uh, you see all these areas in here. His next thing in after his drawing was, uh, after the drawing had found the form or found the movement, the v movement throughout, after the drawing part was satisfactory to him, then he would move in and indicate where the shadows are with hatch lines. And the, and uh, you can see it right up here. You see right here? And then after he has found where those shadow areas are, is when he begins to refine the drawing such as you see here. And that can be done in... <laughs> Cheryl says... Thank goodness Michelangelo didn't use an eraser on his Madonna and Child. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I want to show you the there are two ways artists t artists will sometimes use ha uh, drawers who, who artists who are developing drawings will sometimes use hatch lines, just hatch lines to develop values, and sometimes they'll use uh, gradation or uh, what we call the full gradated draw fully gradated drawing and um, so what I like to do is I like to go into an area where it's, where it's uh, where the shadow is the strongest and I'll start something like this so I might go in to the eye area for example and I might begin now I might begin now just see what I'm doing I'm just repeating I'm just repeating I'm repeating a line but now I'm putting some value to it and then I, as I see the value change that's what I'm doing here. You see that? Now, and I put line there. And then I would get over here in this area where where it comes around the side, where this ear comes around the side of the face right in here. And I might do something like this where I just use the side of my the shaft of my pencil and begin to define or darken that to show that as a value edge. See right in here, I'm checking the time. We're gonna be running out of time long before I was hoping we would, uh, but at least at least to get you started with an attitude to show you potential here. And then I would, be, I will begin to develop that area like that and uh, go into areas like this and begin to find the values my eyes are seeing and again, that is about seeing. It's about recognizing what the shadow areas are doing and what the light areas are doing. I see that I need to move right in here a little bit closer on this one. And you see there, there's a very, this is a very dark shadow area in here. And then we have a lighter, a little bit lighter shadow. But all of this is shadow area right in here. It's just a matter of getting the darks darker where we see them darker and the lights lighter where we see them lighter. So there's not going to be time at all here to to carry that into a full a full drawing, but I want to show you how I would get started then. Now talking about the the uh, using the eraser, I didn't want to just show you a little something there. So suppose I get down here and I'm working down here in the uh, developing the value of, say, the, the nostrils, for example. 
So I'm going to get in here where it's very, very dark. And and so I'm still, I'm using the same, you see it's a, I'm using a, 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 an arm and wrist mo motion there. And I'll, I'll get, I would get that area, that dark and def, uh, define the way I see it. The darkness, uh, the shadow area there. And I see it uh, not quite so dark, but still dark here in this area on the, the front of the cow's mouth like that, like that. And then on the, uh, down at the bottom of the cow, I would usually turn my paper around in an area like that, but uh, since that's, that's going to be confusing to the camera, I'm not going to do that. So I would just work that in right there like that. Roger, is there anything, anything coming in I need to respond to? Uh, he says, I can feel it and my per perfection part kicks in. <laughs> yeah, well, let that put that perfection part on hold and just let it let it evolve into the perfection that you see the drawing wants to evolve into. Uh, I know about those. Uh, that's judgment. Everybody wants to be perfect, but you know I don't know what perfect means. <laughs> All right, so uh, now this is a little bit lighter right in here. It's a little bit lighter right in here, and then a little bit darker right in there. Let's get that. A little darker right in there. And then I would just adjust those values and keep working those values until I get that. Now, what I wanted to show you about the benefit of erasing. Okay, this is very, very much darker down here. All right, very much darker right in here. Okay, now, if I get it from this side... Let me get this, this get, get this indicated right in here. There's a little bit more shadow right in there. All oh, that was being a little bit more shadow edge right in there. And this falls into really deep shadow down here. Uh-huh. Okay. Now. All right. Running out of time. <laughs> Keep saying that. Uh, the kneaded eraser can be kneaded into shapes so that you can then lift out lift out light and let's see if I can get this you can lift out light like that so that you can and this is this is this is the real purpose of a kneaded eraser is to be able to lift out light and use it as a subtracted tool subtractive tool while you're working and not as not considering it as a tool that takes away errors, because certainly uh, I know that attitude is there. Of I, I got to erase it, uh, draw it and erase it, draw it and erase it, draw it and erase it. Well, when you can just put your eraser aside, hide your eraser from yourself when you start to do drawing. If you could, uh, but just begin with the attitude, like I showed you in the very beginning. Realize that what are you doing? You're not, you fall into that thing of, I gotta get it looking like a cow. If I make one straight edge go wrong, I got it wrong. I gotta erase it and get it right. That just makes you stressed out. That just gives you that struggle of stress and makes you hate drawing. And it's certainly no way at all to find joy in your drawing. But if you can just relax with all that, throw all that aside and allow your your mind to be towards I want to see what's there it's that take that attitude I want to see what's there I want my pencil to move in such a way that it can explore what my eyes are seeing let that be your attitude that you explore what's there you're going the line's going to record it and then you then are going to be absolutely amazed at what you can accomplish when you quit cutting yourself down when you quit criticizing yourself and and uh, uh, think uh, trying to depend on that eraser to take away what you consider mistakes, I want to go back. Uh, uh, Cheryl made a comment to reiterate: hatch mark drawing is constrained mark making to get something right, whereas gesture mark marks are freer. Marks n not concerned necessarily with correctness or placement of flow. Absolutely, gesture is exploring movement. Gesture marks are marks that record movement. Just remember that's what they are. 
hatch is nothing. Uh, hatch is a you. What did you say there? You said it right. Hatch mark drawing is constrained mark making. It is constrained mark making, but there is a difference. Remember what you're doing here. You're exploring movement. You're exploring motion. You're exploring where it's going. Each edge that you see is going in a direction and taking on a particular character in that direction. Character is either curved or straight or a combination of curve and straight. You can't forget that part. You can't forget the part of what visual, what makes up the visual world. The visual world is made up of visual movement. And when you can then switch your attention to seeing that as visual movement and have your pencil to be re the recorder, you're recording visual movement, then I think you'll find that uh, drawing can be fun, it can be joyful, uh, Roger, would you put me back on the screen? Don't get to you. There we go. Joy, uh, drawing can be fun. It can be joyful. It can be an experience that you find to be exhilarating. It can be something that you get addicted to that you really want to do. Uh, uh, and it can open up the whole world to you of how to look, how to see, and uh, open up a whole world of really what there is out there to see. So, uh, let me see here. Uh, thank goodness Michelangelo didn't use the right. Yes, Cheryl. Uh, to get proportions, the light, right, link, check out. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you could. Oh, foreshortening. Oh, the foreshortening thing. Yeah. Yeah, we've got the whole foreshortening thing. We've got proportions. We've got all those things. But they all are part of everything I'm talking about. And if you can simply just. Uh, restrict your attention when you're drawing, not to try and, you, okay, let me say this differently. When you begin a drawing, go at it from the point of view of just wanting to search the visual movement that's there. Not trying to make a finished drawing, but just searching, search it, search it. Go on a, uh, an expedition where you don't know what you're going to find but you're gonna be surprised by what you find. Um, now, did, did we, I know um, uh, we get, got lots of things come through and uh, I was too busy dr seeing what I was doing to uh, to get to it, but did we catch most of their uh, questions? Well, uh, uh, Maria said, uh, maybe I'm the only one erasing. <laughs> maybe I'm the only one erasing. <laughs> no, I guarantee you, you're not the only one erasing. Uh, but I think maybe I made my point about erasing. I just want you to, uh, I would like, I would like to have all people who want to be painters, who want to be artists, who are emerging artists, I'd like to have them all in a room together. And I'd like to work with them and sh like I'm doing with you, only I'd like it to be live and show you how easy it is to, to just allow yourself to relax and discover what you're seeing. It's so simple. Just allow your eyes to explore and let your hand follow what your eyes are seeing. Uh, it, it, and, st and forget all this, trying to do this, trying to do that, while you're exploring. Save your, save your composing and your, uh, all the other things that people crammed into your head about what must be, this must be, this must be. Just forget all that and start exploring. Just find out what's in the visual world. Like Kimberly said, uh, you made that look fun. Made that look fun. Well, it that's, is fun, Kimberly. That's, that's what it I'm, needs to be. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, all right. If Oh, my goodness. So here we are. We're going over time. And YouTube's going to uh, penalize. It's not that person. Okay. Uh, I hope all of you are enjoying your holidays, however you celebrate if you're celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas to you all. If you're celebrating Hanukkah, Happy Hanukkah to you all. Or whatever, however you're celebrating. If you are, if you aren't, just celebrate life in general. And we'll see, hope to see you next year, next month for our next Live to Chat. So that's it for now. Bye-bye. Throw that up so I can see how many of